I went with the Karwa and Mohabbat team to one place, Sambhal, and that is the basis on which I will speak. Uh, before that, I just want to make a more general comment with regard to what we all know about what has been happening in Uttar Pradesh till now. And that, sir, with due respect, is not uh, that there is no system in place. There is a system. This is Hindu Rasht. And uh, this is uh, Gujarat 2.0 because uh, and the, there is a optimistic and a pessimistic take that i have on this which is the pessimistic take of course is that hindu rashtra functions with a bjp or uh, nda element in the government with full collaboration and collusion with the coercive apparatus of the state and the criminal and a criminal sort of mafia so these three elements are involved in the establishment of a hindu rashtra the optimistic part is up to Gujarat and up till fairly recently, they needed to actually communalize and polarize society. So the term communalism, according to me, does not operate in UP because it's not sections of one of society, one section of society attacking the other. It is a very small group of people who are mobilized criminals, petty criminals and RSS activists who are mobilized by the police to create violence. So there is now the police itself acts as a mob and it uses petty criminal elements Commune, it's not one section of society against the other. And that's actually the optimistic part of it because, in fact, large sections of society, non-Muslims have come out against CAA. So in Sambhal, I will talk about three uh, uh, aspects of uh, what we understood of police action. I won't go into the details. The report has been submitted in detail. Uh, as far as stoning and violence were concerned, as uh, Mr. Darapuri pointed out, uh, I think we know this very clearly now. Only in BJP rule states have there been violence in anti-CAA protests. And here, too, in Sambhal, there were two narratives we got over two protests on 19th and 20th. On the 19th, it appears that the, police, the stoning and the, uh, the so-called violence, there was a stoning of a bus, there was violence, uh, and the burning of a bus was conducted by police informers. One of these informers was recognized by one of our, one of the people who spoke to us, recognized a police informer in a video of stoning. They also pointed out that there is absolutely, the videos which the police have been circulating of stoning do not show the bus being set on fire. There's no video of the bus being set on fire, but the bus is on fire. So who set the bus on fire is, uh, is a matter of uh, conjecture, uh, fairly informed conjecture, we can guess. So one kind of violence on the 19th, uh, the so-called violence was unleashed by groups of police informers. On the second day, the violence, uh, or so the second day, the march was not called by any political party, 19th and 20th. The march was not called by any political party in Sambal. It was a spontaneous Jume ki namaz ke baad wala jo mahol tha. Usme people came out in thousands very peacefully. They were stopped by the police. And at a particular place uh, 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 around Shankar Choraha, according to the informants that we spoke to who were all Muslim, they said that one side of the road is occupied by Dalits, the other side by Muslims, and sections of that community were mobilized to throw stones at the anti-CAA protest, and then there was a, a mayhem. So in both cases, very clearly, the police is involved in creating stone pelting and violence. So this is what we found. And the second thing I will talk about is uh, about uh, detentions and arrests, which about which, again, I think you've got a fair amount of information. Uh, but as far as Sambhal is concerned, by January 8th, the advocate to whom we were speaking knew of 55 arrests. Uh, and the point, of course, that we all know by now is that in these cases, the large there are thousands of people are detained, large numbers are arrested, and the actual figures are not known until those prisoners are able to actually reach out to a lawyer or they are produced in court. So the figures are still hazy. Till the 8th of January, the figures were. We went on the 2nd of January, but the advocate in an interview said to the press said that there were 55 on January 8th. And there were many minors in these arrests. Uh, some people, a boy was picked up on his way home from tuition, carrying his school bag and so on. People have been arrested from their homes, not from the site of the protest. So there's absolutely no concrete information available to families. And they only know that, that for example, people are missing. And then they come to know two, three days later that they've been arrested. One, 
uh, person we met, whose family we met, one arrested person, is a student of Jamia. He, as well as all Jamia AMU students who studied, uh, who lived there, had all gone back home after the violence in these two, after the police violence in these two universities. When he was found with a Jamia I card in his pocket, he was also picked up from some point. At some point, he didn't come home for two days. When he was found with a Jamia I card in his pocket, he was particularly brutally thrashed. They were all beaten. Every single person who has been arrested or detained has been very brutally beaten. He was particularly brutally beaten and he was being taunted ki bade aaye netagiri karne jamia se vagara. So there was a particular kind of attack on him because he was from Jamia. His sister went to see him in Bareilly jail uh, after a two hour, uh, two and a half hour journey. And she said there was a small boy with the adults there who was crying inconsolably for his mother, 11 year old boy, who had been arrested and housed with the adults. And uh, so I, I, I just want to conclude by saying that the atmosphere of terror and intimidation in Sambal was so great that we were all drawn into that terror as we get out of a car with three or four of us clearly outsiders, the ways in which people avoided us, the ways in which people refused to give us their names. Uh, there is a general atmosphere of terror and intimidation and those who spoke to us are very brave. They took huge risks. And uh, there is no doubt that the Muslim population of UP is held hostage by a criminal mafia consisting of the BJP government, the coercive apparatus of the state, and local criminals. This is a doctor who wants to live in the hospital. He doesn't want to live in the hospital. He doesn't want to live in the hospital.